Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from Deltia'sGaming.com. We finally get to break down some of the patch notes for the Elder Scrolls Online DLC and Update 33 Ascending Tide coming to PC on March 14th and consoles March 29th. I'll briefly go over some of the biggest points and we'll do much deeper dives into gear dungeons, hybrid changes in later videos. Keep in mind this information is on the test server so it is subject to change, but this will give you a snapshot of what's to come. Timestamps are below in the video description if you wish to skip ahead. Let's get started. No, the card game is not coming to this specific update. That's going to be in June with the chapter. What we get here is dungeons and some quality of life improvements and a whole plethora of new gear sets. So let's go over what's included in the DLC first called Ascending Tides, which can be purchased outright when it launches or obtained just by subscribing to ESO+. In this new DLC game pack, we're going to get two new dungeons, a bunch of gear sets, collectibles, achievements, motifs, furnishings, and a really beautiful new home. So let's What's included in Update 33 base game? Motif crafting knowledge and achievement links, undaunted progression change, new item sets which we already talked about, outfit styles item, set collection update, deconstruction assistant, and multi-rider mount so you can ride with a buddy and or a companion and they do work in Cyrodiil. New furnishings, house server optimization, and a new prologue quest. Um, the most important feature people want to know about is account wide progression which allows you to unlock all the achievements on your characters and one huge massive collection, though somewhat controversial. This will also include titles, so you former emperors and god slayers out there, I see you. Now the big information, and that's combat and abilities, both breaking down general and class specific. So if we go over the general one, this is the one everyone wants to know about. Player abilities that scale with your highest offensive stats, such as weapon damage and stamina, will now dynamically scale with your highest offensive stat. Meaning, if something scaled previously just max stamina, it's going to look and see what's higher, your max stamina or your max magic. If something scaled off of just weapon damage, now it's going to look weapon damage or spell damage. It's going to find what your biggest stat pool is, allowing you to do hybrid, cool, different things. And then as a heads up here, a disclaimer, the following abilities have not received adjustment to their scaling. Backlash, wards, annulment. That's the light armor skill. So let me break it down to you, uh, Delta level, Barney level. Take, for instance, my Stamina Base Templar PvP character. On the live server, I have roughly 14,000 magic and a little over 3,000 spell damage. If I were to try to use the magic base burst heal on the live server, Breath of Life, in PvP while doing or in Cyrodiil, it would heal like a noodle. The tooltip on this ability is just a little over 5,000 heal on a burst heal. On the PTS, it's radically different. That's because I'm sitting around 6,000 weapon damage and 30,000 stamina. Now if I look at that Breath of Life tooltip, it's 11,000. And in duels, I was able to crit heal on my stamina based Templar spamming a magic based burst heal for 12,000. You'll still be limited to your armor choices because your armor choices, light and medium, reduce cost of abilities and recovery. So you're not going to be able just to spam magic abilities at will per se but it's going to give you some freedom and actually what you're using on your builds. And you're going to see some goofy things that actually pull off. And some of those item sets we may not have been using in the past will really come to fruition right now. Torx Mythic, Smoke Bear Haunch Food, Wretched Vitality 5-Piece Gear Set. The too long didn't read here is I don't think meta top end PvE loadouts will change. Maybe slightly once they parsed a lot and figured it out. If you don't know, most currently in the top end trials are running dual wield daggers with a back bar destruction staff. While PvP, you'll have magic builds running 2H and resto staff, or stam builds running dual wield 2H and maybe a back bar resto. But you already have that to some extent. This will offer stamina builds a lot of access to burst healing, and this will allow magic builds a lot of access to executes. You have a lot of freedom. Now we need more testing on this before I make my final analysis and do a deep dive video, but it frees up a lot of creativity specifically in PvP. Though the downside is it does sacrifice some class uniqueness and makes it a little bit more homogenized gameplay. It's going to be pros, it's going to be cons, it's not for everybody, but in PvP you'll have some really cool freaky builds out there. Next major buff um, change up and hybridization is player's ability to grant major savagery, prophecy, brutality, or sorcery now grant both of their respective versions. Meaning, if you slot in Camo Hunter, which previously gave you the crit buff, weapon critical buff, now it'll give you the spell damage buff, inner light, and so on. To give me a little bit more flexibility in what you slot and why. It does note that player passives and consumables that grant minor version of these have not been adjusted. 
meaning it's great for a magic templar because you can cast a dawn's wrath ability and give minor sorcery to your group if they took that away it would really gut the class uniqueness so this is a compliment great thing they kept this in this is what i was worried about next up is the op busted dragonite buffs yep they got a buff not a nerf number one is the ardent flame fiery breath slash engulfing flames morph this morphs bonus damage taken now scales with a mixture of your weapon and spell damage rather than your spell damage and max magic the cap is reached when you combine weapon and spell damage over 9,000. for most pve and pvp players out there this will be very easy to hit thus it will just increase your flame damage quite easily if you're not already at the cap next up is god tier insane making mag dk just absolutely nutty for pvp if it's not already that's the burning embers change this ability now heals up for 100 of the damage done at time it deals damage rather than 75 percent of the total damage when the effect ends essentially how you used to use this is swipe with the burning embers and then you could re-swipe for a big burst heal on demand. The way it works now is, Burning Embers just heals like a Mack truck every second, like a very, very powerful dot. Not to mention, this heal over time is a very long duration. When we were testing, it basically felt like almost as powerful, if not powerful, as a rapid regen with a much longer duration. To be fair though, my criticism with the class in my solo uh, PvE magic guide was this. I did not have a really strong heal over time, as a mag dk in pve sure i had burst healing but without pale order it was very noticeable that double destro staff was just not working with pale order you don't notice it but this really fixed the pve version of it but i'm afraid it's completely overtuned for pvp to be fair i don't know how they get it right i had a slot cinder storm without pale order on my mag dk just to keep up with the other classes this is just insane. Next up, Draconic Power Spiked Armor Volatile Armor. The area effect of this ability now scales off your physical and spell resistance rather than spell damage and max magic. So you can see this as kind of like a tank slash stamina DK buff. Stamina DK specifically didn't have high spell damage or max magic. This damage over time is AoE and hits like a hammer, especially on magic. In fact, it's one of the hardest hitting damage abilities we have. Now, it's still gonna do decent, but not maybe overperforming. Stam decays, it might hit a little bit harder. Tanks, it's gonna do work. On the Necro end of things, not much changes, just some fixing of the issues. Nothing major to go over. The major Nightblade change that I found is Strafe slash Funnel Health Morph. This increases damage done by 5.6%. The reason this is nice is because the other morph, Swallow Souls, is the common one that's commonly spammed. This gives you some more group utility, and if it performs not at the same level, but near the Swallow Soul single player morph, you might actually take and have great group utility with your main spam wall on a Mag Nightblade. Moving on to the Sorcerer, and we have Crystal Shard slash Crystal Weapons Morph. This ability will now replace Imbune Weapon or its morph after casting to help reduce the amount of potential burps it offers with singular moments. Meaning what you could do before was Elemental Weapon and Stat Crystal Weapon hit an Overload and essentially you would one-shot someone from Stealth as a Stam Sork. It's very cheesy, but it worked a lot, so they changed that. Storm Calling, so Lightning Form. Um, this ability and Morph now lasts 20 seconds at its base up from 15 to properly match the standard duration of armor buffs, meaning it's going to be easier to maintain. Boundless Norm, the Magic Morph, ranks up to 30 seconds rather than 23, and the Morph no longer ranks up to 1.1% damage done per rank. Hurricane, the area effect now grows at 8 and 15 seconds rather than 6 and 11. Reduce the damage bonus per tick by 8% down from 10. The total damage will reach 160 at max stats, up from 150%, resulting in slightly more damage. Too long didn't read, it's going to take a little bit longer to ramp up in damage, but the morph is going to last a little bit longer and should be easier to maintain. Next up is Bay, and that is my magic slash stamina Templar, and thank god Living Dark didn't get completely gutted. Templar, Adric Spear, first one is an odd change, and that's Burning Light. Essentially, if you do four uh, jabs within a second, meaning use your main spamble, it procs an extra damage effect, and now it's going to only do magic damage rather than magic and physical, but continue to scale off your highest offensive stat. So reading my tooltip on my Stamplar, it's literally the same going from magic to stamina, but it's kind of a nerf since it's not physical damage, can't be amplified um, like you would normally on my Stamplar. So odd, odd change. Piercing Javelin is up next. This ability is morph now by a blast block to live up to their name. It doesn't tell you a whole lot, but when we actually got it and tested, 
It's incredible change. Both morphs, um, Persian Javelin specifically, when I was testing it, dropped blocks. You couldn't have block. You would get CC. Think of it as a range fossilized now. It's a crazy powerful single target burst stun that you can rely on and kind of give me that old lumen of shards back. So this is incredible, especially in duels. Puncturing Strikes is up next. Biting Jabs, the Stamplar Morph. This morph now grants Major Brutality and Sorcery for 10 seconds after casting, rather than Major Savagery for 8, as Sunfire already grants Major Savagery and Prophecy. I personally don't like this change. I would prefer it grant the Major Savagery. The reason why is you can get both of those buffs, Major Savagery and Major Brutality, quite easy. The advantage of getting Major Brutality from Biting Jabs is it frees up a back bar uh, skill slot if you didn't want to run Rally. You could run Dual Wield and Arresto and get away with it having really, really good healing without the reliance on Rally if you wanted. Spear Shard is up next. Increase the range of this ability um, up to 28 meters, but reduces the radius of this ability down to 6 meters from 8. So, it's going to be a 2 meter radius. If you don't know, Blazing Spear on your back bar hits like an absolute hammer and is a massive 8 meters. Well, it's going to be 6 now so a little bit less dps uh pve especially in aoe when you're just spamming that thing next up people are really excited about and that's the radiant ward morph of sun shield increases the shield scaling per enemy hit by 20 percent at rank 4 up from 9. in a duel or 1v1 this scales off of max health in terms of effectiveness so if i'm doing someone i have 28,000 health and a 1v1 casting this ward gives me a noodle shield it's not very big at all i would much rather use my magic for living dark it way outperforms it now get a 60,000 uh plague doctor magpar or stampar that jumps into the fray with 17 people beating on and cast this thing yeah you're gonna have one of them annoying pain in the butt tanks that sits there and holds blocks spamming wards look forward to that next up is living dark reduces the snare potency of 40 percent down from 60 that's all thank the maker living dark still busted powerful unstable core fix an issue with this ability um had a 100 millisecond cooldown uh per effect rather than one second listed so it could do additional more damage as intended which is odd next up the warden got some much needed buffs specifically to healing the first one up is scorch slash deep fissure increases the duration of major breach granted from this ability to 10 seconds up from six However, I don't think many Magdens are going to take the Deep Fissure Morph considering how the hybridization works, making the other morph much, much stronger using the stamina one. And people have been doing that for quite a while. The hybridization will make it even stronger. So something needs to happen with that morph to be on par. Next up is Growing Swarm. The morph now limits the number of active targets you can have to one, but it increases the damage of the AoE portion of this ability by 50% to make up to the new limit. So it's still a good single target buff, but you're going to get a little bit more AoE damage and it's still great range ability to use. Next up is the healing that I was talking about. Green Balance Fungal Growth increased the healing of this ability in its morph by 12.5% to meet the AoE effect burst healing standards. The cost still remains the same, so if you'll notice throughout what I'm going to read to you, you can kind of see a pattern in what Azos is doing. They're kind of homogenizing all the healing to get Breath of Life, the Necro Heal, Fungal Growth, Combat Prayer, all in the same kind of uh, vein as far as burst healing. Again, we're going back to homogenization. Either your class likes that or you don't, taking away a little bit of the uniqueness, giving everyone a very big, powerful burst heal. Not saying this is not needed for the Warden, but that's where it's going. Lotus Flower got a big buff, so this reduces the cost of its abilities in its morph 1350 down from 2970. That's a massive cost reduction. And its base morph grounds now grants Prophecy, Crit, and Savagery, Weapon Crit while it's active. Green Lotus, this morph now increases the number of targets healed to 2 up from 1. It also increases the healing of the light attack portion 1500 up from 1320, and the heavy attack portion 4500 from 1390 at rank 4. The Lotus Blossom, this morph now increases the duration of this effect by 60 seconds, up from 20. That's a massive buff to both of these morphs and the base morph as well. So making this really, really powerful ability to keep active and be, should be much easier to maintain. Nature's Grass reduced the healing from this ability in Nature's Embrace by 10%. Bursting Binds, which is what I love to use to kind of leap into a friendly, reduce the healing of this morph by 25% to ensure it's not stronger than other burst healing abilities such as rush ceremony see what i'm talking about here they're trying to get all the healing roughly in the same vein whether you like that or not that's the direction of the game now two-hander got some changes critical rush this is a gap closer 
This ability now ranks up cost reduction instead of damage and reduce the base cost down 3510 down from 3780. Momentum, specifically forward momentum. So this is not the burst heal. This is the other one. Increase the final cost of the ability 3240, but increases the duration of major and minor buffs, providing this ability to 40 seconds up from 20. Essentially, it's much easier to maintain the major and minor buff, major brutality, and then the minor stamina recovery, along with you get a little bit of the snare and Im immune to movement. So it'll be an easier morph to maintain if you struggle with maintaining buffs. Reverse Slice, the execution from two-hander is an interesting one. Increase the cost of this ability and its morph uh, to 2430 up from 2160, so it costs a little bit more. Execution of the single target morph no longer ranks up 1.1% of the damage done, instead reduces the cost per tick. While Reverse Slash, this is really good. While Reverse Slash, this morph splash damage now ranks up to 100% of the original hit up from 78% at rank 4. So this thing is really good, worth taking, especially if you're going to do 1vx and you're not specifically in a duel. I love this in PvP. One-handed sword and shield. So this is kind of a tricky one here, but power bash, power slam the morph. They're trying to give it a really nice main spam over from the sword and shield, and it might be overperforming once we get the tool with it. The bonus from this ability, resentment, no longer stacks up to 10 times. It now simply increases the damage of your next power slam. So when John and I tested it, we did a duel and I held block while he hit me and it procked this resentment and I power bashed him back. Now he had high, very, very high resistances, but it didn't seem to do the damage I would think. So either the tool tip's a little bit deceptive, my character wasn't fully buffed, but I need to do a little bit more deep dive into it. It could be overperforming if we get the bash sets to work right. And also shield charge, shield assault, increase the shield granted um, from this morph to 25% of your max health up from 15. Invasion, reduce the base cost of this morph, uh, 3,510 down from 3780. Duel got a slight adjustment to flying blade. The base version of the skill now also grants major brutality and sorcery and increases the damage done of the teleport version by 50% to better reward its use. I don't even use that morph. I have no idea what it does, so I need to go test it, but I don't know if it's going to replace any main spammables anytime soon. Very well, very well could be in PvE. Bow, uh, got a little nerf to bombard. This ability no longer also snares, so it's just going to mobilize now. Resto staff got some major changes. Blessing of protection. So, this uh, ability's morph now follow the AoE burst heal standard. See? Burst heal standard. Increase the cost massively, 4,860 up from 3510. Increase the healing done of Blessing and Protection Combat Prayer by approximately 36% and its duration by 10%, so up from 8. This hits really, really hard. When we're doing the PvE encounters, this is a crazy powerful burst heal. Not to mention that the buffs are much easier to maintain, so Resto Staff Burst Healing here got a massive buff. So if your class doesn't have a burst heal, you can easily slot one of these two morphs and have a great one. Blessing of Restoration, even further, that's going to be the burst heal option. So increase the healing done by 12.5%. Notice that 12.5%, it's there again a second time. That's not coincidental. Increase the duration of the buffs provided to 20 seconds, up from 16. So that's going to be a massive, powerful nuke burst heal in PvE or PvP. Steadfast Ward, this uh, morph now reduces its cost as its ability ranks up rather than increasing the shield size. Well gang, here's a sneak peek at some of the new gear sets. In a future video, I will break them down bit by bit and test them out with specific ideas, thoughts, and build usage. But here's just a glimpse. First up, we're going to go with the new dungeon sets. The first item sets up, we're going to go from the Coral Airy dungeon. Next items up, we're going to go with the Shipwright's Regret Dungeon. These items are from new PvP Rewards of the Worthy can be obtained by earning Alliance Points in your mail. These new Monster Helms are from Imperial City in the Districts and can be obtained by killing the mobs and using Telvar to buy the shoulders. Well, gang, that's a breakdown of the patch notes highlights. I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff, but I'll break down each component in DLC over the course of the next few weeks and get you prepared for March when it launches on PC and console. Leave me a comment. What'd you like? What'd you not like? Not about the patch, but about me. Thanks for watching.